So if you recall, this is the PowerPoint we looked at before break. I'm just going to briefly go through the first couple of slides, which we already did in class and you've done in your workbook um, as a review, and then I'll go on to the new material. So the Earth as a system. What is a system? A system is a group of parts that work together as a whole. The energy that drives the Earth system has two main sources. Heat from the sun is the major one and also heat flowing out of the Earth as it cools. For parts of the Earth system, the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere, here it's written as lithosphere, but in your textbook it's geosphere. So systems are constantly checking to make sure that everything is in equilibrium. And if there is a situation that needs to be fixed, um, feedback gets sent back to the system. And so there's a change then in the system. So um, everything stays in equilibrium. And that's where we finished off last week in class. So forces is the next section um, that you already read about in your textbook. Lands are constantly being created and destroyed by forces. We may not see it um, in our everyday day-to-day -day lives, but it is happening all the time. There are constructive forces and destructive forces. Forces that construct or build up mountains are called constructive forces. Um, they build up mountains, other land masses, volcanoes are going to do this. Lava is new, um, new molten rock that then hardens to be solid rock. Earthquakes can build up land masses by lifting up mountains and rocks. And here's a picture of um, a volcano on the left. And on the right, you can see that rift um, between the two different pieces of land and that um, that mountain that's happening in the back is actually growing by the land coming together in the back. So destructive forces destroy and wear away at land masses through processes like weathering and erosion. These are words you should hopefully remember from sixth grade because you learned about them a little bit then. And also you read about these in your textbook right before break also. So hopefully um, that's jogged your memory a little bit. So the difference between weathering and erosion, we use them a lot together. So sometimes it gets a little confusing as to which is which. But weathering is when the land breaks down. Same forces are going to do both weathering and erosion. But weathering is when the land breaks down. Erosion is when the land moves. And deposition is when erosion stops and that's where the um, land gets deposited in a new location. So weathering and erosion both can occur by natural forces such as water or ice or wind. Also by um, people. People can break down rock by mining or chipping away at it and moving it someplace else. Um, so when you chip away at it you're weathering. When you move it to a new location you're eroding it and then deposition is when it gets dropped in the new location. So here are some pictures of um, weathering that's gone on in different locations. Um, in the top one that was most likely, well, it could be wind um, if it was underwater at some point, which it looks like it might have been because you can see those layers of sedimentary rock there. Um, it could have been water as well. In the bottom one, it definitely still is water, um, but um, it's likely that those two arches that are there in the in the rock that's further away over here. Can I draw in there? Oh, I should have a better color than black. But here, these two arches here, there was probably a different type of rock um, in these two arches. And then um, maybe it was a rock that actually dissolves in water or is more susceptible to weathering from water. And so that's why those two little tunnels um, were, were weathered out of that rock and, um, and moved away by erosion. Um, so weathering and erosion destructive forces have happened here in these pictures. So before breaking class, we colored in the layers of the inside of the earth, the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Um, how do scientists know 
um, what's going on in the interior of the earth. No one's ever been there, despite the crazy movies you may have seen um, claiming that people have been there. So how do they really know what's going on? Well, there's two major ways scientists can figure out what's going on inside the Earth and how they deduce what kind of layers are there and what they're made of and if they're solid or liquid and all of that. The first way they do that is by rock samples. So geologists have drilled holes as deep as 12 kilometers into the earth and they bring up samples of rock and then they look at those rocks compared to rocks here on the surface and try and figure out um, what the conditions are where those rocks were mined from. Um, hopefully, maybe at the end of this week or, or sometime during, definitely during our Earth Science Unit, I have a couple of articles um, that hopefully you'll get a chance to look at. They just started in January, this past January of 2016 again, um, drilling again down to the mantle. They've been trying for years and years and years to do this and they've never made it to the mantle. Um, but they tried, they started again in January, so we'll keep track of that and see how they're doing with that. Another way that scientists learn about Earth's interior is from seismic waves. So seismic waves are the waves that occur with earthquakes, okay? And so when geologists um, keep track of all those seismic waves that happen with earthquakes all the time, and um, and we'll learn later on when we learn about earthquakes that some of the waves that are produced are transverse waves and some of the waves are longitudinal waves, um, just like we learned about in our physics unit. And they travel differently through different mediums. So if, um, if a rock is solid versus liquid or um, you know contains more iron or less iron, these waves will move differently and so scientists can keep track of that and that helps them figure out what's going on with the layers inside the earth as well. So here are the layers that we saw the other day when we did our coloring. Um, there's three main layers. There's the core, the mantle, and the crust. Um, but we separate the core into the inner and the outer core. Um, as you go from outside in, let's change color to purple maybe. So from outside in, your temperature is getting higher, okay, and your pressure is also getting higher as you go from outside in. So let's look at these layers from the outside in. So the crust is where we live. The Earth's crust is the layer of rock that forms the Earth's outer skin. Um, it's a solid rock that includes both dry land, that's where we live, and um, the ocean floor. So it's hard to see over here because the words oceanic crust are here, but this is the oceanic crust here. Okay, and this light blue at the top is the ocean. This is the continental crust. Whoops, not too straight. <laughs> this is the continental crust here. It's a lot thicker, okay? And the brown part down here that I'm gonna make some red swirls in, that's the mantle, okay? Whoops, that's a layer below, okay? So the oceanic crust is thinner, the continental crust is thicker. The overall composition of oceanic crust, crust is mostly like basalt, which is a dark rock that's very, very fine-grained. I'll show you samples of that in class. And um, and I'll bring some in. I have some basalt sand, um, sand at home, too, I'll bring in for you. Um, the continental crust is mostly granite. So granite is what a lot of you might have at home on your countertops. Usually it's speckled like pink or white and gray and black. Um, it's got what we call coarse grains. You can see the individual pieces of different type of minerals in it that come together to form that type of rock. The mantle is the next layer down. Um, it's very hot rock. The, the crust is not nearly as hot as the mantle is. Okay, and it's hot, but it's solid. Um, scientists divide the mantle up into different layers. Usually the top part of the um, mantle is more solid and so 
it kind of um, sticks next to the crust, and so they call that the lithosphere, okay? And the lower part of the mantle is called the asthenosphere. That's still solid, but um, it's a lot more fluid than, um, than the upper mantle is, the lithosphere. So here's another picture of um, the layers. So this is um, continental crust, okay? This is oceanic crust. And then this is the top of the mantle. It's so hard to see that yellow in, on top of the orange. But this yellow layer here that I'm coloring in yellow now, this is the top part of the mantle. So this together with the brown layer above it will make up what we call the lithosphere. And then the rest of the mantle is what's colored in red here. And this is, um, again, like I said, it's solid, but, um, but it's solid, but it's pliable. Think of like silly putty. Um, that's what this is like. And what happens in this mantle is convection currents. If you remember, we talked about convection currents when we did physics and we learned about um, heat transfer. Okay, so what happens here is the inside of the earth down here is much hotter, okay, than it is up here in the mantle. So this part of the mantle down here gets much hotter than this part up here that's cooler. So it's hot, it rises because it's less dense, then it gets up here and it cools and it comes back down um, and where it gets hot again and those convection currents go over and over and over again. It has to do again, like it does in heat transfer, with changes in density due to the temperature of this rock here. So now the inside of the earth, below the mantle, is the core. So the core is mostly made up of the metals iron and nickel. Um, it's got the solid inner core, which is here, okay? That circle on my part. And then this is the outer core here. Um, so the outer core, they think, is liquid because of the way seismic waves pass through it. And also because something's got to be liquid there in order for the Earth to have that magnetic field that we have. Um, so, so they believe that this is liquid here and that the inner core is solid. And they believe that it's solid because they think that with the extreme pressure that's going on in the center of the Earth, that it has to be solid. Something under that much pressure would just have to be solid. Um, so that's what scientists think, that this is solid here. Let's get a good color. This is solid. This is liquid. This is liquid. And this is solid. And finally, three things that are um, really important that we learned in other units that are really important now to apply to earth science and the layers of the earth. The first is heat transfer. We learned about those three types of heat transfer, convection, conduction, and radiation. So convection is happening here in um, the mantle, super important, okay? Um, we're going to learn about plate tectonics and these convection currents are really important in terms of plate tectonics. Density is a measure of how much mass there is in a given volume of a substance. If you recall, density is mass over volume, um, mountains over deserts and valleys is what we learned to remember that. So again, convection currents are doing what they do because of the changes in the density of the rock of the mantle dependent on its temperature, okay? And also remember that more dense things are going to be lower um, less dense things are going to be higher up, and that's going to come into play again when we talk about plate tectonics. Um, and then finally, convection current. I already mentioned what I mentioned about heat transfer, but it's that flow um, in a fluid um, that, tr that moves the heat um, from one place to another. And that is it for tonight's homework. See you tomorrow. Bye.